Before you go into the process of editing your images, the very first step you're going to go through is image culling. And that's when you go through the images that you captured and determine which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to get rid of. Now, the software that I personally use for this is called Fast Raw Viewer. And Fast Raw Viewer is something that I personally find to work very efficiently and quickly compared to something like Lightroom. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with Password Viewer. I simply prefer to use the software for the image calling process. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I have my memory card loaded right now on this computer and I have a few sample images that I picked up for demonstration of the image calling process. What I'm going to do is go ahead and right click on the first image and I'm going to click on Password Viewer and have it open up. So what I'm gonna do is let's go through some of these images and see which images I would prefer to keep and maybe rank for post-processing later and the images that I want to get rid of. Now, this is something that is going to happen to you quite a bit when you are going to overexpose an image, maybe by mistake or underexpose or have blurry images. How do you quickly judge which images you want to keep? So let's go ahead and pick this image right here. If I go into it, as you can see, this area looks overexposed. Now, if I look at the histogram here, the important thing is, as you can see, it says raw histogram. And that's one of the main differences between FastRaw Viewer and many other software packages out there is that it does allow you to see the actual raw histogram. So this tells me quite a bit of information. As you can see right here, it says that on the red channel, I'm not blowing anything out, but on the green and blue channels, I am blowing out information. And the nice thing about this particular tool is that I can use something like the highlights inspection tool where it shows me which information is recoverable and which information is not. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of information right here in the mountain that I will never be able to recover. For that reason, uh, just based on the raw histogram, because I'm pushing things to the right too far, and based on this highlight inspection tool, I know that I need to get rid of this image. So for me, one of the quickest way to do it is just to press the delete button and that gets rid of the image. Now, one thing to keep in mind about Fast Row Viewer is that it doesn't actually delete the image. It simply puts it in a rejected folder and uh, moves it from the main folder into that rejected folder. So if you do delete an image by accident, you can first of all, just go back and undo, or you can go to that folder and recover the file. So at this point, let's go ahead and uh, look at two image samples here and see which one is going to be sharper as a keeper. Now, in these two images, I know that if I look at this image in one-to-one -one preview, then this looks pretty sharp. But at this point, I'm looking at the raw file. I'm not looking at the embedded JPEG image. So for me, in order to be able to properly see whether the image is sharp or not, I can actually use this built-in tool for displaying fine details. If I do that, as you can see, it's showing me all the edge detail information on this image. And so far, it looks pretty good. Now, if I click on the next image here, this one is blurry and this tool is still turned on. And despite the fact that the tool is turned on, I do not see any edge detail which means that the sharpness is not there. So between these two images, if I were to pick which one I want to keep, it's very clear that the image on the right side is the one that I want to get rid of. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now, as I go through this process, I will be picking images that I want to keep for post-processing. So if I have images like this in a sequence where you can see I've got this one right before sunset, this is at sunset, and this is the peak sunset, and this is right after sunset. If I were to pick which one I want to edit, I would most likely want to rank it. So I'm gonna go ahead and rank this image. Now I have the keyboard sh shortcut set up similarly to what, what I have in Lightroom. So if I press five button on the keyboard, as you can see, it ranks it to five. And the nice thing about it is once I rank the images within Fast Row Viewer, it works similarly as it works in Lightroom. It's just going to create a sidecar file along with that file. So when I import the images into Lightroom, that information will be read and the ranking information will be saved. So the nice thing about it is that I can go through this process very quickly, determine which images I want to keep, get rid of the images that I do not want and end up with less work in Lightroom. 
Before I do that, let me go ahead and go through some of the images and rank them so that I know which images I'm going to be post processing in Lightroom. So I'm simply going to give fives to the ones that I want to edit and you can use whichever ranking system you want. And I'm doing these just because they are part of the same HDR sequence. Maybe pick something in the beginning of the sequence right here and looks like this one is going to be a better one. So as I do this, let me show you what's happening on the memory card. Now, if I look at the memory card, I have now a rejected folder. And as I said before, rejected folder is where my deleted images went. And these are the images that I actually do not want to import. And at the same time, as you can see, some sidecar files just appeared in this folder. And those are the sidecar files that actually contain the ranking information that I just saved in those images. So since I do not want to be importing any information or any of the images in the rejected folder, I can either delete that folder now, or as I import into Lightroom, I'll show you how you can simply go into the folder structure and skip all the images from the rejected folder. So I'm just going to keep it there for now. Let's go ahead and fire up Lightroom. I have a few sample images that I already loaded into Lightroom, but let's go ahead and import the images from the memory card. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on import photos and video. And as you can see, I've got the memory card right here. Now, one way to import from a memory card would be to just click on this and by default, the memory card appears and it will just include everything. Now, that's not something that I want because if I include everything, including the subfolders, remember that rejected folder? Well, all the images that I do wanted to get rid of are still sitting in that rejected folder. And if I have include subfolders checked, then all of those images are going to be imported as well, which is not what I want. Instead, if I go into the memory card and I click on the main folder and not the rejected folder and exclude included subfolders, then it's only going to import these images. And that's a very important step here because again, I don't want those rejected images. Now, if your memory card doesn't appear this way and it's just going to show up on the top and you don't have a way to navigate into the memory card content, then the best way is to just find it right here under files and navigate into the folder itself. Another way is simply to delete the rejected folder, but only do that after you have everything backed up. All right, so I've got everything selected now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the same folder where all the other images are and maybe just uh, give it a different name. Let's go ahead and call it Landscape Trip. And I'm going to call it, in fact, these images are from New Zealand, so I'm just gonna call it New Zealand. And go ahead and import it. Now, all of these images are getting imported into Lightroom and as you can see, already that the third image that I imported is actually ranked with five and that information is being read from the sidecar file. So anything that I ranked within Fast Viewer is already in Lightroom, which is great. And that's the reason why you want to do that because it saves you a lot of time and a lot of frustration because let me show you why I personally don't use Lightroom for image calling. If I were to go through the same process, say evaluate sharpness, well, I would have to click on an image and wait until each image renders. And that is a painful process. This loading thing, depending on the size of the image or the, the resolution of the file, it might take forever. And look at how long it's taking for me just to see one image. That's a very, very frustrating way for me to try to call images and that's the reason why I don't use Lightroom. Unfortunately, even if you generate one-to-one -one previews, that process alone can take many, many hours depending on how many images you have. Within Fast Row Viewer, I can go through images very quickly, hundreds of images at a time. So just keep that in mind. 